Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We must know where we came from to know where we're going. We have been bombarded with lies in the beast system. The whitewashing of history had a negative impact on the indigenous people. Israelites, it is important not to remain passive in the awakening. The scriptures inform us that knowledge would increase in the last days. We must take advantage of the abundant knowledge the Most High is making available to his people. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. If we continue to allow the serpent seed to write us out of history and place false labels on us, we are putting our lives and future generations at risk to be terrorized by non-indigenous people. The non-indigenous people do not value our lives. We must value ourselves first before everyone else follow. The consequences of the indigenous people not responding to the tales told by the serpent seed is the root to the harsh environment we live in. We must counter every false speech, label, and narrative that is placed on us to take control of our image and community. Israelites, having money and power in this present-day beast system is of no value to you. Our rich culture, history, good standing with the Most High, and a good name should be more desirable. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Once you have the Most High, everything that you need, the Most High can provide. Remember, there is no good thing the Most High would withhold from those who walk uprightly. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Israelites, consider this. The serpent seed is the most diabolical group in this world. The kingdom of darkness uses the serpent seed to destroy this earth. Despite of their barbaric ways, many among the indigenous population desire to be like them. The indigenous population put the serpent seed on a pedestal. Never mind that the serpent seed has robbed, enslaved, and persecuted the indigenous population until this day. We have indigenous people marrying the serpent seed and procreating with the serpent seed. The reason many among the indigenous population admire and respect the opinions of the serpent seed. The serpent seed has done a fine job of hiding everything devilish about themselves. The whitewashing of everything great that has ever happened made the indigenous people believe the serpent seed is highly favored. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail! Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Not everyone who is blessed and highly favored obtain the blessing from the Most High. Satan can bless as well. The kingdom of darkness has whitewashed the angels, the Messiah, the chosen people, the Israelites, Ham's son Mizraim, also known as the Egyptians, the kings and queens of Europe, the Elohim of Israel, every biblical character, the serpent seed whitewashed the original people made in the Most High's image. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Everything of historical value that is highly esteemed has been whitewashed. After multiple generations of the indigenous people being taught they are inferior and never contribute to anything, the indigenous people as well as other groups of people want to attach themselves to anything white. 
They are misled to believe they could inherit the favor the serpent seed possess and improve their chances of survival. You cannot improve your chances of survival if you procreate with a group of people whose genetic makeup is nothing but recessive genes. You are doing yourself a disservice when you procreate with an inferior gene. You should never look to people to save you. The Most High should be your only provider and protector. You should place your trust only on the Most High. The serpent seed cannot save you. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Israelites, consider this. If the indigenous people were as inferior as the serpent seed proclaim, why do they procreate with the indigenous people? If they were as dominant and superior as they want you to believe, there would be no need to procreate with an indigenous person because that would dilute their genes. The only reason they promote relationships with the indigenous people to help their struggle genes. When the serpent seed procreate with an indigenous person, we are saving their lives. Israelites, if you do not fight to have a good name, image, culture, and community, you give the kingdom of darkness a lot of power over you. The workers of iniquity can rewrite your history, take over your possessions while you complain in the background. We are living in a hostile environment due to our failure to take control of our community and image. The false accusations and the stereotypes against the indigenous people cause many to view us in a negative way. The indigenous people rather pass down the abominations of the heathens to our children than to lead. The serpent seed and the heathens will do anything to maintain their dominance. They will continue to assassinate our character if we allow them. If you've been paying attention, whenever the Israelite community debunked the mountains of lies told by the serpent seed, the synagogue of Satan will do everything in its power to overshadow the truth. The serpent seed will bombard the media with more lies to cover up their wickedness. The kingdom of darkness and the workers of iniquity will stop at nothing to maintain their position and prestige honor among all people. The reason the indigenous people should desire a good name and image over fortune, money cannot save you. Money has become an idol that many people worship and would do anything for. The Most High said, you cannot serve him in money. No man can serve two masters, but either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. We have countless indigenous millionaires and billionaires in this world. Despite of their financial status, black countries and communities remain impoverished. Despite having a spending power in the billions, we cannot improve our communities. If wealth and power in the physical realm could heal the indigenous people, we would be healed a long time ago. Africa is the richest continent in the world. The indigenous people own the continent, yet they cannot improve. You must fight for what you want. Fortune is not what's going to improve our communities, nor restore our image. Repenting and submitting to the Most High would restore us as a people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The Most High has the power to undo what has been done to us. A good name or image is better than fortune. The scriptures depict an incredibly good story about wealth. The poor man in the scriptures had everything waiting for him in eternity. In the physical realm, he had nothing. While the rich man Lazarus had everything in the physical realm. However, the rich man had nothing but hardship and pain in eternity. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. The wealthy indigenous people of today have no power despite having billions and millions in their bank accounts. The serpent seed control what they do with the money they have. The serpent seed and all who join themselves with the kingdom of darkness have nothing of value to look forward to in the coming kingdom. 
They have gained all they're going to have in the physical realm. That is why the scripture said to build spiritual wealth. That way the serpent seed cannot rob you of your wealth and all your treasures are waiting for you in eternity. Israelites, in order to obtain status and great wealth in the beast system, you must trade your glory for the lesser. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Unfortunately, there are many indigenous people trading their glory for the lesser. They convince themselves that they are improving their conditions. The death of my brother helped me realize there is nothing of value to trade my glory for in the physical realm. When you're gone, you leave it all behind. What does it profit a man to obtain the whole world and forfeit his soul? What can a man give in exchange for his spirit? But what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Israelites have no desire to have fortune over a good name and image. As the people of the Most High, we should rely on the Most High to provide. The wealthy had to do vile things to obtain all they have in the beast system. Remember, the Most High will provide all your needs. In addition, if you seek his kingdom and righteousness, Yah will add all these things unto you. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Most High know what you need before you ask. King Solomon had the opportunity to ask the Most High to give him anything that he wanted. King Solomon asked the Most High for wisdom. Because King Solomon humbled himself and did not ask for money and long life, the Most High gave him the desires of his heart and more. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. Did you notice, Israelites, the Most High spoke to King Solomon in the spirit realm, his dream life. Your dream life is where covenants are established. When you serve the Most High, you lack nothing. Do not believe the beast system of having to have it all. The Most High will provide. When you have a good name and image, you are respected. The indigenous people are not respected. Non-Israelites believe the words of criminals before they trust or believe a black person. Today, non-Israelites could call the cops and have the indigenous person arrested simply on his or her words. The accuser's words are believable over an innocent indigenous person. When your reputation is destroyed, along with your name, you have zero credibility. When the people do not trust you, they would mistreat you and go as far as to harm you. Israelites, do not put your children and future generation in danger by not taking control of your community and image. The life of the indigenous people living in America should be a testimony to all indigenous people whose reputation is destroyed. Israelites, that is why it is important to have a good name over fortune. It is important to take control of your image and community. Stop letting non-Israelites and non-Indigenous people tell your story. The more you allow them to tell your story, the worse it becomes for you. When you have a good name and respect it, people would believe you over the person with a tarnished name and reputation. When the indigenous people start to respect themselves, they would gain the respect of others. We must do our part. When the synagogue of Satan wants to destroy a person, the first thing they do is slander the person in their media. 
After attacking their character, the serpent seed discredit the person by destroying their reputation. Once the reputation and name are destroyed, everyone will discredit. The awakening is a good example. The synagogue of Satan attacked the awakening in their media. The workers of iniquity discredit the awakening by labeling the awakening as hate speech and black identity extremists. Once they manage to deceive the people to side with them, they begin to attack the people through censorship. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The serpent seed that is in control will see to it that the indigenous people continue to carry the blame of their wicked reputation. The serpent seed will continue to hide behind the indigenous people's identity, history, and inheritance. Israelites, do not allow them to hide behind your history, culture, and identity anymore. The Most High is very particular about his name. The Most High will not hold anyone guiltless who degrade his name. Yah will not allow anyone, including his chosen people, to defile his name and reputation. The commandment of Yah say, do not use his name in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. The scripture said, The Most High will reveal his new undefiled name to his people. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. A good name and reputation are not only important for us, but also for the Most High. As the chosen people of the Most High, we represent the Most High. If we defile his name and reputation, the heathens would believe they can do the same. The Most High charged his people, the Israelites, to be holy, just as he is holy. When you set a good example, the people would follow. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. The Israelites are known as the people the Most High chose out of all the families on earth. His people are called by His name. The Israelites are supposed to be a light to the world. The purpose of the Most High's chosen people is to teach the other nations how to serve the Most High in the Spirit and in truth. If the people of the Most High set a bad example to the other nations, it would destroy the Most High's reputation because the Israelites represent Him. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, hearken and do. Defer not for Thine own sake. O oh my God, for Thy city and Thy people are called by Thy name. And all people of the earth shall see that Thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of Thee. The Most High had no mercy on his people when they sinned against him. Yah exiled his people from the promised land and his presence for polluting his name and defiling his reputation among the heathens. The Most High allowed the heathens to conspire against his people to cut them off from being a people. As the descendants of the chosen people, the Israelites, we are living in the land of our captivity. In the present awakening, we are fighting to restore our name and reputation. The kingdom of darkness and the workers of iniquity did a phenomenal job of causing us to bear their burdens. The kingdom of darkness has destroyed our name that even our own people do not believe us when we tell them their new name. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. When we desire a good name over riches, everything that we need, the Most High will see to it, we have. When we do what is right, the Most High will restore his people and make their enemies at peace with them. In addition, give his people favor in the sight of all men. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. When you have a good relationship with the Most High, there is no good thing would he withhold from you. Yah will supply all your needs. Make sure your foundation is rooted in the Most High. Israelites, do not partake with the heathens in degrading yourself and your people. The Most High command His people to love one another. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Accumulating massive wealth in the land of your captivity has no value. Too many indigenous people have gained massive wealth in the beast system and our conditions remain the same. 
Despite having a spending power in the billions, the other nations do not respect us nor value what we have to say. The kingdom of darkness is eating the fruits of our labor. When you are rooted in the Most High, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Israelites, you gain power with a good name and reputation. The serpent seed is the most diabolical people in the world. However, they are respected because they have taken your good name. Do not despise who you are, nor assist the kingdom of darkness in destroying your people. It is time that the indigenous people fight to clear their name and reputation. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. <laughs>